What's going on guys? My name is Mr. Dalek JD and the hype is real with Black Ops 4 Zombies. Today we have the teaser poster completely deciphered for you all and we're also going to investigate further on on what exactly this poster could be trying to tell us. So we've got a really exciting video here. So if you guys are excited and you enjoy it, it only takes a second to let me know you did by clicking that thumbs up button. And if you have any thoughts and theories on what this poster could mean, please drop your thoughts down below in the comment section as I'd absolutely love to see what you guys think. If you missed all the hype yesterday, then definitely check the video that's in the description just so you can hear how excited we are and learn basically the basis and our first thoughts on this poster. But if you've missed the news, Treyarch dropped us a zombie teaser on their social media, which is this amazing poster here, which says Mankind's Reckoning will be its downfall with this mysterious character who seems to be zombified holding a mask of a bunch of weird symbols. Well, we managed to work out pretty quickly that these symbols are all alchemy symbols and it could be a suggestion of some of the things that we'll use within the actual zombies mode itself. Alchemy could be a feature that we'll see where we can create things, which would be interesting. But at the time, no one knew what these symbols meant. But with a simple click of the fingers, here we go. We have a different version of the poster created by myself. I spent a good three or four hours on this thing when no one really knew all of the symbols and I was working it out along with tons of you guys in the community. So first and foremost, a massive shout out to all of you who have collectively helped everyone on finding out all the least symbols. I wanna give a special thanks to Liam for bringing this up to me quite early on that it was alchemy symbols and linking me a really useful website as well as Milo and his stream for putting in a lot of work as well well you're probably wondering how did we actually get to this point right here how do we know what all of these mean and in order to find what most of these symbols actually meant we had to look for a book that came out in 1657 called alchemical processes by annabelle bartlett and this is one of the only books around on the internet that actually has most of these symbols now i've certainly never seen this stuff before and i'm sure you guys haven't as well but there's a certain page in this book which has a table of sorts where you see the symbols and they're all numbered and then you go ahead and look at the table on the right and match up the number with the symbol that you're trying to work out the name of and it will give you the name and most of the time these were in French which could be translated into English some of them don't quite translate as well as others and we'll go into those a little bit more specifically when we look down on all of these but let's start with all the symbols on the left so going from top to bottom we have this weird battery looking one which is alkali salt then the sort of sad face means death. Then we've got this one mean decompose. And then we've got death again. We've got this, which is weak as in an actual length of time, like a week. We then got this sign here, which means saltpeter. Then underneath that, we have this sort of circle with the plus sign in it, which is yttrium. Then we have this O, which could be considered as either oxygen, the circle, or empty earth. We're not quite sure exactly on what this one is. So for now, we're just going to call it either oxygen or the empty earth. I love the sound of the empty earth, though, because it links in so well with the transit crew. Then we have this weird table, which is lithium or stone. Then we've got the alkali salt again. We've got death again you've got this sort of arrow pointing to the right which is iron or sagittarius we've then got oil we've got sulfur we've got azure we've got this weird one which is in french fleur de ariane which sort of translates as ariane flower it's a bit weird on the translation and not quite right if you guys speak french you might be able to understand what that is underneath that we have antimony oxide then we've got sulfur again fleur de ariane again then we've got alum and then at the bottom we've got oil or essence so essentially the stuff on the left is like a sort of table of all the symbols that we can expect to see in black ops 4 zombies i'm not sure but then of course around that person's eye we have a load of different symbols and what's interesting as well is that you notice some of the symbols on the left particularly death decompose and fleur de ariane they all have these weird lines at the front of them almost like the sort of counterbalancing what the 
alchemical compound is. And you can see that on the circle as well, a lot clearer that some of these symbols have like the lines along the side of them. We're not quite sure what that means yet, but going around clockwise, starting at 12 o'clock, we've got oil, then we've got some new ones that weren't on the table, such as beryllium, which was a real pain to work out. It's not very obvious at all. Some of these symbols are so hard to find on the internet that we're assuming that that's what it means. We've like basically narrowed it down to it being beryllium. We've now got Fleur de Ariane again, and then we have this weird one here. It's like a circle with a triangle in it, which I can't speak French, but it says Faux de Rue. I, I really don't know how to pronounce that. But um, if you put in these specific words into Google Translate, that says traffic light which makes no sense. But if you take out the weird E at the end, it actually says like wheel of fire, which sounds a lot cooler to me. So we're going to go with that one. But we've included some of the like original wording that the book says, just in case it's not quite right. Then underneath it, we've got yttrium again. Then we've got death and we've got decompose. We've got alkali salt. We have death again. We have oxygen or empty earth. We have the wheel of fire again, decompose, then salt. And then we finish our little circular table there. Now, the fact that we have potentially solved every single symbol in this is one thing, but the actual meaning behind it and its point is another thing which we just simply don't know right now. For all we know, these could end up being absolutely useless and not useful at all when it comes to the actual game itself, if it involves us having to, you know, decipher things within the map if we can see these symbols anywhere. But these, of course, are relevant in some way. We just don't understand at this point in time exactly what it is. Now we've got to ask ourselves, what else is in this poster that we can sort of bring some relevancy and try and work out where exactly this is taking place? And if we go back and look at the Only the Curse Survive poster, you can see in the background there underneath the zombie that you can see a bunch of cityscape, which at the time we could assume was like Chicago or New York or something like that. And it is fairly close to where the actual location of Shadows of Evil is. We unfortunately can't see any background location of this weird character. But one thing that I don't think a lot of people have touched upon yet is the fact that he's holding a mask. And this mask has a particular sort of emblem or crest on it, which is a unique symbol that has not been found before on the internet. So I'm going to assume that this is something which Treyarch has created specifically for zombies, just like the Mark of the Beast on the card in the original poster for Black Ops 3 Zombies. So this crest on the mask is definitely something important and could potentially be linked to Apothecan as it does kind of look and resemble the face of the Shadow Man as what a few people have said. But here is a drawn out version of this crest. Thanks to Liz is a dolphin for creating this. So you can see it a little bit clearer. Kind of looks like an alien face, but we can't really work anything else out. But it's the mask that is really intriguing. I've seen quite a few people in the community mentioned that this mask heavily resembles the mask that a certain king called King Baldwin IV wore during his reign as King of Jerusalem from 1174 until his death in 1185. We don't know for sure if this is what Treyarch are hinting at with this mask image, but it definitely has some resemblance to Baldwin IV of Jerusalem and the background history behind him and what's gone on it links in so well with the ending of Revelations that it's actually quite uncanny. So what I'm going to do, show you the context behind King Baldwin IV so you know everything about him in the best way possible and also visually pleasing in the best way possible. Now this video I'm going to show you was uploaded by a channel called It's History. So full credit goes to them. You can find a link to the original video in the description, but I wanted to show you this just to showcase what exactly the story is. And as soon as you start watching this, you can instantly see the relevancy towards the Great War and especially towards the premise characters the moment that they win the Great War because it looks exactly like the Great War is actually happening. Today, I'm going to take a closer look at Baldwin IV, the Leper King of Jerusalem. 
Baldwin became ruler of the Kingdom of Jerusalem in 1174, though he was too young to rule being just 13 years old. Even though Jerusalem had been taken from the Muslims by the Crusaders 75 years earlier, the situation of the kingdom was still not stable. There were knights like Baldwin's first regent Raymond III, who worked for peace between Christians and Muslims, but also those like Reynald of Châtillon, who was lord of Ultra Jordan, one of the four vassal states of the kingdom of Jerusalem, who was basically up for bloodshed, attacked Muslim pilgrims and caravans, and ended up finally being taken and personally executed by the legendary Saladin. It was William of Tyre, the young king's teacher, who discovered his disease. Baldwin and his friends were scratching each other with their fingernails one day, and the king did not feel pain. That meant one thing. The leprosy soon became visible and damaged the king's face to a terrible degree. His sister Sibylla, ironically enough, was known far and wide for her beauty. In November 1177, the 16-year-old king, aided by the Knights Templar, led an outnumbered force against Saladin and his forces in the Battle of Montgisard and routed them, inflicting huge casualties and earning the most celebrated victory of his reign. By this time, the disease had paralyzed Baldwin's right hand, so he fought left-handed. The disease progressed and by 1183, Baldwin was nearly blind and unable to walk. He appointed Sibylla's second husband, Guy of Lusignan, as his regent, but that didn't work out so well. Saladin had surrounded the kingdom of Jerusalem, and at the wedding of Baldwin's half-sister Isabella, besieged the wedding fortress itself. Game of Thrones stuff here. Baldwin managed to break the siege, but Guy would not fight Saladin, so Baldwin removed him as regent and took the throne again. He appointed his five-year-old nephew as his successor and died two years later in 1185. Baldwin V did not rule for very long though, as Saladin took the city of Jerusalem and most of the kingdom in 1187, capturing Guy de Lusignan. But Saladin is a story for another day. Today was just a quick look at Baldwin IV, the leper king of Jerusalem. Not only from a visual point of view does this all look very reminiscent of the Great War, wall mural that we can see in Shadows of Evil as well as in Revelations, but it just fits in so well with the lore that Drought could genuinely involve this in with the fiction and it made complete sense. King Baldwin IV, who was a leper king, had Knight Templars who originated from French Crusaders who could potentially be the Origins crew, helped fight the evil forces of Saladin, which is involving themes from Egypt there, from invading Jerusalem at the Battle of Mont Gizard. It just sounds too perfect for a beginning to the fiction of Black Ops 4 Zombies and relating the premise crew straight into the midst of things exactly where it left off. We get to see the actual history of the Great War. But again, this is just a theory, but a really cool one at that. The reason why we came to this theory is because of the mask in the poster. Everything in the Black Ops 3 poster, of course, was all tied in with Shadows of Evil. So everything we're seeing in this poster could also tie in heavily with our first Zombies map on disc. And man, it just links up so damn well. How exciting would it be? to play as a premise crew during the Great War, to fight the Apophagans, banish them forever, and then be seen as gods, just like the loop suggests and how the story officially starts. It just sounds amazing. As we know from that short video, we know that King Baldwin IV also had an incurable disease called leprosy, and that's why he wore the mask. Perhaps also his disease could have turned him into a zombie in this slightly different take on the real fiction that's gone on here. I don't want to ramble on for too much, but I definitely feel like I'm going to make at least one more video discussing the story implications of what could happen if this was to be what happens in the first map and any other ideas that float around in between now and my next video. But how exciting is this? It's May. We're already talking about Black Ops 4 Zombies, and this is completely re energized pretty much every Zombies fan and I just can't wait to hear more. We could even get more teasers in the next coming weeks, which is so freaking exciting. But if you enjoyed the video, slap a like on it. Make sure to subscribe and notifications turn on so you never miss a future upload. And I'll catch you on another one very, very soon.